I will start with the dot of six project, but you can choose uh, whichever you want. Loading animation, let's call it loading animation two. This is a dot net six project, but uh, you can choose dot net framework or dot net seven, whichever you want, because the concept is going to remain the same. There we go. Now, before we do anything, we will just uh, start with the debug to see how it looks. Okay, it lo it looks fine. I will try to change the color and see whether it works or not. I'll change the color to green and see that it is changing. So that is totally fine. Now what we need is we need a control which will be uh, used as a progress bar or as a spinning loading animation or whatever you want. So we'll first start with a circle. There are several ways to create a circle. The most easiest one will be to create an ellipse and uh, set the height and width for the ellipse. So let's say height is 200 and width is 200 and uh, fill is uh, green. Now the problem here is I, uh, this is a completely filled circle like if I need a center a area of the circle which should be transparent it is not possible. I can create a, I can do one thing I can create one more circle like this and say that the width of the cycle is 180 and 180 and uh, it, it's fill is uh, transparent. But what happens when I give transparent? It will be showing the color from the previous ellipse. So basically the color will be now shown from uh, the bottom green. So I can just give it a white. But then again we have a problem. If I set uh, the background is yellow, it will not be covering the background. It will always be white. So that is a problem that we face. So instead of going with all this uh, ellipse, we can directly go with uh, path and path geometry. There is a video which uh, the link to the video I will post in the description where we have clearly explained uh, how the path description and geometries work in WPF. You can take a look at that. Uh, currently <coughs> I will start with the canvas. I will put a color first uh, so that it looks uh, uh, easy for us to understand what we are dealing with. Let's say the height is 200 and with this 200. So this is my uh, canvas. Within the canvas, I'm going to create a path, and uh, the path will have a stroke color of green uh, at present. We will remove it later. Stroke thickness is uh, three, and uh, let it be filled with uh, violet, and that's it. Now the data is where we need to put our geometry. <clears throat> Let's first start with. Uh, I will first start with something quick. If you see here at the left top, that is your uh, starting point. Uh, let's say if I need to create a line from starting point is 0, 0, and then I need to create a line which goes to 100 in the x-axis and 100 in the y. It will be a uh, 100 in the x-axis and 100 in the y-axis down. So this is how it works. But take a look at the video that we have posted. So uh, in the description, it will be easy to understand the parts. I will do one thing. I know for a fact that the height and width is uh, 200, 200. So I'm going to create a circle which will be starting from the middle of the left to uh, let's call it as a left uh, line, middle of the left line of this uh, uh, rectangle, and it is going to cover the whole rectangle. Now the thing here is, uh, uh, in path geometry, we will not be able to uh, start. Uh, or draw a full circle. We need to draw two halves arc or two half semicircle. So we will start the first semicircle from the left uh, line in the middle, and we will draw a semicircle which will end on the right side in the middle. And again, we will draw a semicircle. So in this way, we will be able to draw a semicircle, and in the same path geometry itself, we will draw one more uh, uh, arc which will be little bit offset from the previous one, so that we will end up with a circle which will have a center which will be a hole that's our end goal i will start now uh, instead of moving zero zero i will move to i will i need to go down so down is 100 which is my, i'm sorry x is zero y is 100 and after that i'm going to create an arc and I, if you notice i'm using small a which means that i'm going to use relative path uh, <coughs> small a the way it works is for arc the way it works is uh, arc will have 
first star, um, size and last it will be um, point point or uh, coordinates where you need it in between you will have three flags remember these are all flags first flag will be rotating angle second flag will be small or large uh, circle or small or large arc and third flag will be clockwise direction so which is the direction of the arc so basically start with size and end with coordinates my size i know that uh, what is the height so that will be my uh, radius so the radius of my circle is 100 and uh, this is this is arc is uh, uh, ellipse so you need to give x radius and y radius both are going to be 100 comma 100 so that is my size and i will go to the end coordinates end coordinate is from this left to middle point which is uh, 0 comma 100 i need to go towards the right which is um, 200 right the width is 200 200 comma 0 so i need to go to 200 comma 0 between this i have the three flags in between are rotation angle i don't want anything and whether it is a large arc of course i need a large arc so one and clockwise uh, obviously we are starting from here towards the right so it is clockwise so when i do this i received my circle now after this now my drawing pen is at the right side because we started from 0 we moved the pen to 0 comma 100 and from there we draw an arc now we need to start from this point from this point we need <laughs> the same arc but we cannot give something like this the reason is it will again go from there to here so what we need is we need a hundred comma hundred that is for sure and uh, the end point is not 200 from here i don't need it at 200 comma zero but i need it in the left side which is minus 200 comma zero and that's it so we now manage to get a circle so now what we need is again we are now at this minus 200 which is at this end point but <laughs> instead of doing that i will directly do a absolute move which is from here initially we moved 0 comma 100 which is uh, uh, 0 on the x-axis and 100 here right so now we will do a little bit inside which means uh, 10 on the x-axis or maybe uh, let's say uh, 30 on the x-axis and down 100 so move to 30 on x-axis and down 100 so now we are almost here in the right side somewhere here in there and we are going to draw an arc again but this time the arc will be what is uh, 100 uh, now we have moved 30 right so if you are moving 30 here and 30 there which is 60 and <laughs> total length is 200 200 minus 60 is uh, 140 so we are trying to draw an arc uh, arc with a radius 70 so 70 comma 70 70 comma 70 and we need to reach where uh, the total uh, the total uh, width or like uh, total size which will be 140 so 140 comma 0 the reason why we put zero is uh, we don't need to we are using a relative relative means uh, from the current point we are moving it towards 140 towards the right now in between i will give the flags so which is zero i don't want a rotation i want it to be a larger and i want it to be in the clockwise direction so now i managed to get it now the same one i will do here i will copy paste but instead of 140 i will give minus 140 and that's it so now we received a uh, we made a perfect uh, donut shape but this time with the uh, opening in the other in the center so this uh, fill is fine but i don't need a stroke and stroke thickness let us remove it and now that we have already managed to achieve our requirement we can remove this as well and this violet color we don't need violet color i will give some uh, okay so i will give some light gray color like this somewhere like this that's perfect now creating the second path is going to be a little bit uh, difficult because we are not going to draw a full arc but we are going to start from this left point uh, where my mouse is let me minimize it we are start going to start from here draw an arc until up this point we are going to come down and draw an arc in the reverse which is anti-clockwise direction and close it down so i will directly go ahead 
and Dharit. So what I will do? Okay. So now we have something here. Let's put the color for this uh, path. Let's some um, maybe this blue looks nice. Okay. So we are going to start at zero comma hundred. That is fine. But we don't need anything else. Let us remove everything. Okay, <laughs> the starting point is fine. The next thing is arc. The radius is going to remain the same, hundred comma hundred, and uh, no rotation, zero. That is true because this is a flat, and one one. And instead of uh, with this two hundred, uh, we are going to have a width uh, which is basically the radius here. So x is hundred. So y is also hundred. So y is going in the reverse direction upward. So minus hundred. So we are going to go go for until. Hundred comma minus hundred. So we are there, we are there, but uh, currently uh, we don't need this one. I will put zero. Wait, uh, one. Let's put zero. No, I made some mistake. <coughs> Let us uh, check again. Uh, what we need uh, the width of uh, the arc radius is hundred. That is sure. Instead of going till from going to 100, we are stopping at the middle. Ah, yes, I said minus 100, right? Not 100. So we are reaching at this point, and this one is not a large circle. So we reached at this line. So the next step is we need to come down. How much do we need to come down? We need to come down 30. So I will say I need a vertical line of sorry, a small vertical line of 100. So I now came down to 100. Uh, not 100 actually we need only 30 right so vertical line of 30 now in the anti-clockwise direction we need to draw another arc so the arc will be relative and the arc radius is we know that it is 100 comma 100 sorry it's not 100 it is 70 comma 70 70 comma 70 and let us just put uh, 0 1 1 currently let us put all the flag uh, the one is the third one is whether it is clockwise or anti-clockwise. I will say it is anti-clockwise. So I will put zero there. And after I say that, my where should I end it? The ending should be at this point. So from here, I need to come down, uh, come down 70 and left to 70, which means uh, my x is minus 70, y is 70. So I need to come down x is minus 70 and y is 70. Now this one we can put a small circle zero and that's it. See uh, if you don't understand why I put minus 70 plus 17 all these things you can follow up the uh, path creation video that I have put in the description where we have discussed this uh, in detail. Now what I will do I will create uh, quickly I will go ahead and create an animation path dot triggers and event trigger event type is loader whenever this is loader go ahead and perform an uh, event now before even i do that i'm going to do something manually uh, let's go to our properties for this path and the property when i go down let me move this here just for time being if you go to my uh, I, I bought a new camera and i wanted to test how i how it looks when i type that's why i'm adding it uh, transform uh, it's a render transform of rotation if I put some value do you see what happens it is rotating with the center point we don't need the center point we need to be rotating with this corner so let us make it zero and there is this center point option here center point uh, when we get down to the center point we already have this origin right render transform origin is 0 0.5 comma 0 0.5 but we need it at the right end is the right bottom end is 1 comma 1 we need it as 1 comma 1 now if you try to rotate it is perfectly rotating so we will put it at 0 and that's it now let me go back here again now <coughs> we have everything now what we need is in our uh, event trigger we need a begin storyboard 
and so and regarding the storyboard begin storyboard what is these things we have already written so many we have already prepared so many videos you can check our channel for a different animation videos and in the description also i will give links to our other animation videos you can take a look at them storyboard first what i need is a double animation and uh, double animation property is a uh, attached property so you will not be directly finding it it needs to come from storyboard storyboard dot target property is okay first one property is path dot render transform and inside path dot render transform transform group dot children because it contains children uh, among the children oh, 0 1 2 I am looking at my second children which is I know for a uh, sure that it is a rotate transform so rotate transform dot angle so rotate transform dot angle this is a property which i need to animate which should go from zero come on we should go from zero to 360 and the time it should take is duration should be zero hour zero minutes and once again within once again and the repeat behavior it should be repeating forever so this is what i need now this is done let us run the video run the application and see how it looks there we go so our animation is working without any issue so this is totally fine but we need to still make a couple of uh, minor changes so that's what we will do now so let me uh, adjust the size here and instead of putting them inside a, a main a window i will go ahead and create a new user control we are not dealing with custom control only user control i will call it as uh, what do you call a, um, donut donut loading donut loading a donut spinner i don't know you can come up with any name that you like uh, i'm calling it as donut spinner and uh, inside the donut spinner we'll copy our canvas from here to here cut this out go to our donut spinner that we created now paste it inside uh. now the whole application if you go back to your uh, main window and let us save it for a second now i can directly call local donut spinner but the problem here is uh, since we are doing it for the first time we need to build it up we cannot adjust the height and width. I will, I will show what I mean. If I put the height to 40 and width to 40, just see what happens. This is going somewhere outside. It is not what I need. I need it to be for within this size. So, to achieve that feature, you need to put everything instead of a grid, put it inside a view box. When you put this inside a view box, go back to your main window. This now takes whatever shape you assign it, uh, whatever size you assign it, it will take it. Uh. So you you give a size of uh, let's rebuild it. For you give a size of forty comma forty, so you want to have it in line, or you give it a size of one hundred comma one hundred, it will take that size. Uh. So one hundred comma one hundred. Let's try four hundred comma four hundred. So it takes that size. So this is what we need. So let's keep it at uh, 80, 80 in line, something like this. So currently, what we will do, we will try to add this uh, message somewhere. But uh, you you can go ahead with adding different messages. You can play with it in some of our videos. We have already tried this. But to keep it simple, I'm just going to add only one property, which is the duration. Uh, duration for spinning, and uh, another is the uh, color uh, color at which it rotates only two color two things that i will add here uh, you can play with different values and you can add them so prop dp which is dependency property i am adding a dependency property of duration and call it duration again you can call any name that you want but this one should be a duration property and owner is uh, donut spinner and default duration because i don't know do what the value for duration is duration is a structure uh, in our previous video also we already saw that it is structure so there we go we create our duration 
So the next thing what we need is prop. Oh, sorry, it's not a prop. It's a prop DP dependency property. Prop DP, and we are talking about the color brush, and this will be. Uh, let's call it. A, why do we need a spinner color like this? We can directly bind to the background property. Anyhow, it already contains a background, so we will take the background property and the foreground property. That that will that will make it more. Uh, you know reasonable so we have the duration now and this duration we will bind it binding relative source relative source of ancestors type is my ancestor type is local donut spinner so go to my donut spinner wherever the ancestor is and within the donut spinner the part should be uh, duration and notify and source updated is true and update source trigger is proper to change the usual values and now going back to the color itself this filler let's go back and see whether it is a brush yes it's a brush so what i will do this one i will bind it to the background of this one so background color we will give this value copy this and give this value here oh my goodness we should not be having it there okay so it doesn't work that way hmm. okay we will add a color i uh, will add prop dp and say brush which should be spinner color and again same uh, donuts not so not donut spinner and uh, brushes dot uh, Default properties brushes dot alice blue, it should be somewhat like a white color. I'm not sure. Um, that's fine. Then let's take here spinner color. We'll do the same binding, whatever we did here. But instead of doing it, let me copy this and the color should be what was the color that we some uh, spinner color, spinner color. So my spinner color should be here now. Let's try to load our animation and see how the spinner color looks and then we can redefine it if needed. Is it loading or not? Yeah. Uh, our color is here. Alice blue means it's not a very nice color, I believe. So it's very bad. Uh, so let's say, do we have any other blue? Carrot blue? I think uh, carrot blue also doesn't look nice. Uh, uh, we have some other blue. I know for sure that this uh, Dodger blue will look nice. But I think we need to reload it. Now. But that's alright. Okay, da, da, what is that called? Dodger blue, whatever. Dodger blue looks nice. But since this is a property, user can still define the color by themselves. For instance, I can do like this and say, duration give me 0 hours 0 minutes and 2 seconds but spinner color give me red and this one i will say this one instead of putting it in a grid let us put it in a stack panel so now i will have two so i have one which is running at one second which is the default value taking default color second one which is running little bit slow because i have given 0 0.2 seconds but with a different color which is defined there. if i want to make it go fast i can use 0 0.5 seconds even though you don't see it but when running it it should be seen there you go so that's it uh, this is how we can define our spinner but instead i will do something else uh, orientation uh, just to show orientation is horizontal and uh, okay uh, that's it i believe that we don't have anything else uh, in case you want to adjust the height of uh, something to 40 comma 40 you can adjust it uh, you can add some text along with this uh, like uh, text block uh, text is equal to loading please wait and uh, you can make it look like this uh, uh, wow 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 since it is there <coughs> mm. vertical uh, alignment is equal to center there we go you can always uh, you reuse this control in whichever way you want uh, and uh, that's it uh, please uh,
check out the other videos in the description and uh, just share your comments uh, how do you like it and if you need any uh, new videos uh, if you want any idea if you have some ideas for new videos just share it in the comments and we will try to do another video on that thank you so much thank you for watching